it's kind of ridiculous to, to talk to somebody about programming and say, oh yeah, I'm just using a library called Globby and it wraps a fast glob and it uses glob patterns. In the last video, through some code metamorphosis, we converted our humble little caterpillar of a text editor and converted into this beautiful butterfly of a code editor. However, there is one problem with the project that we only have one page. And obviously that's not the objective. The objective is for every single thing that we wanna reference, we wanna have a separate page for that thing. We could just copy and paste the same page over and over again, but of course that will not scale and will become ridiculously difficult to maintain. So what we need to do is we need to take the common aspects of the page and then abstract it into a template. So that's what we'd like to do in this video. This is our string index.tsx file. And this was the page I was mentioning that we want to convert into a template. How do we do that? Next.js has this really fancy schmancy thing, which is to create a file. And if the file is named in the right way, it will automatically create routes for all matches to something, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll get into it in a sec. Just trust me on this one. We're gonna call it path, but in a very, in a very different way. We're gonna have these square brackets. We're gonna have dot, 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 and we're gonna have path. And it's gonna be a TypeScript JSX file. What we need to do is we need to take our all, all of our original index.tsx file that is going to get moved into here. And we're going to delete this old file because we don't need it anymore. And we're also going to delete the folder because we won't need that anymore. Oh, is it going to delete? There we go. It's all deleted. First off, this isn't the strings page anymore. So we should rename this into something more sensible. Let's say a JavaScript page template. <sighs> Much better. The next thing is we should add some types here. We should say that this is a function component and we should also say which props we expect to be receiving. For now, let's leave this empty. Next, there are two methods that we need to export in order to tell Next.js how to create pages. The first one will be get static paths. That will tell Next.js which paths to create. The next one is get static props. This is going to be used by Next.js so that whenever a page is generated through get static paths, it will know which props to pass into your component. The component in this case being the JavaScript page template. So this brings up a question. Where are we going to get the paths for our project? We could have a text file, just have lines in each of the text files saying that this is what the page should, where the page should be. But there's something that we can do that would make it a little bit more streamlined. We could have the data in a separate folder. So in my React project, I can have a new folder called data. And in that we can have a folder named JavaScript. This can be the folder that will house all of our code snippets that we'll have in our pages. So for example, we could have a file called string.js. And in string.js, we can just put a whole bunch of different strings and an assert saying that these are all strings. We could log to console all of the different strings and this will show up on our code editor. Now, what if you wanted to have a different path? So let's say string slash length. So we'll need a new folder for that and a new file for length. And we can add an example there that will show the length of a string. I've added a few more files that uh, don't really show any examples, but are just here as placeholders so that we can modify them in the future as well as show that what our code is working. Now the very keen among you will notice that, oh, hold on a sec. Why do we have string.js and then a folder called string and then length.js? Why don't we have just something called index.js inside of our strings folder? That is a very good question and a very good observation. Fantastic job. The thing is, we're not actually requiring this using Node.js. So we're not going to be taking advantage of any module syntax. You'll notice that I'm not exporting anything here. We're just going to read the file. Maybe there's something in the future that will enable that functionality because I do believe it's a little bit more familiar to people. Now that we have a folder with all of our paths in it, how do we get those paths into this function, get static paths? Hold on, before we do that, let's add our, all of our TypeScript types to this. All right, how do we get those file paths? So in order to get file paths, we're gonna use a library called Globby, which is wraps around fast glob. And if you don't know what glob patterns are, uh, maybe I'll make a new video for this in the future. 
But otherwise, <laughs> it's, a, it's a separate topic for a separate conversation. It's kind of ridiculous to, to talk to somebody about programming and say, oh yeah, I'm just using a library called Globby and it wraps a fast glob and it uses glob patterns. Oh my God, people are gonna think you're crazy. Globby returns a promise. We're gonna await Globby. The pattern should be from your current working directory. So it'll be data slash JavaScript slash anything. I love that the double star is called a glob star. And the first option we're gonna pass in is the only files option. The output of Globby will be an array of file paths. Those file paths include the extension and we don't want that. So this line will replace the file path extensions. And I know that this is redundant, but Trust me, we'll need to modify it later. So get static paths requires an object to be returned with paths and whether or not there's a fallback. Now that we have all of our static paths, what we need to do is on each page render, we need to grab props that we can send to our page template. Something of note is that the get static props type has two parameters. The first one being the props that will eventually get to our JavaScript page template. So these ones right here, what we can do is uh, extract this so that we can reuse it in both areas. So I created a new type called JavaScript page template props and we can stick it in both of these types. The next generic parameter of get static props is a object that has the name of the file. This one right here, see how it says dot, dot, dot path. We want to stick that over here. Note that we use the dot, dot, dot path syntax, which means that what we will get is a string array and not just a string. If we didn't have that, these three dots it, in just square bracket path, square bracket, this would just be a string, not a string array. So from the uh, get static props documentation, we can see that we have params and you can see my IntelliSense saying that path string or undefined. So what we need to do first is to see if params is undefined, we need to just return. Now, what should we return? Next.js says that get static props should return not found if the page is not found. Now that we know that params is not undefined, we can grab path from it. For each one of these paths, for example, JavaScript string length, we should expect to see path be equal to an array with string and length. And then for JavaScript slash string, we should just see an array with one string. Of course, the last item in this array will always be the file name. And whatever remains will be the folder. So we have the folder, we have the file name, now we just need to read the file. This resolve is just from Node.js's path. And you notice that what we wanna do is we wanna read a file from right here. So something I would like to do is remove this and have it accessible by both this function and the other function. CWD just stands for current working directory. And I named it that for a reason because another option of this globby function is CWD. So now that I've added this, I can actually simplify my pattern to just be this. And then I can use the CWD over here. And then I can spread the folder array onto here and add the file name. Of course, we'll need the extension for the file name. Oh, and of course, we don't want to return a buffer. We want to return a UTF-8 string. So we should have our initial code as a string. Let's return that so that our function component can use it. Our original type for our page template doesn't have anything in it. So what we need to do is move these over into there. And our initial code is of type string and our path is an array of string. Uh, before I forget, the array of file paths returned don't include the current working directory. So I need to append JavaScript to all these different paths. <laughs> Whoops, that should be returned. So these props will be passed into our template so we can access them here. First thing we could do is we could just, instead of calling it strings, because this is a generic page, we could use our path to tell us what this is. We'll just join them with the space. Here's our strings page. We're not getting the code that we want to, and that's because our editor is the one setting the code. We don't want that. Before we leave this file, let's pass our initial code to our editor. Back in our editor, for our props, we want to accept initial code. And in our props, we can get the initial code. For simplicity's sake, uh, instead of trying to update this state, I'm just going to create a new state inside of our editor. And we can call our initial code our doc. And then we can remove this line. Oh yeah, oh, okay. So if doc changes, we wanna make sure that this editor state does change. Look at that, so good, too easy. 
Well, there you go. I was able to create multiple pages from little snippets of code. If you happen to have any comments or questions, make sure to leave them in the section below.